Traveler the role playing game. Detonation in 10 seconds. Blasting onto the scout station, the team encounter resistance in the form of a couple of adversaries in black armor, pinning them down with accelerator rifle fire. Breaking cover, the Sarge and company close the distance and using swords and cutlass bring down two of the foes. Seeing that discretion as the better part of valor, the remaining two combatants race to the elevator, taking it to the level above. Seizing the initiative, LD and Troy follow. On the next levels, the team find the remaining boarders holding civilians as prisoners while attempting to activate the station's remote detonation system. As bullets fly, one of the prisoners is shot. Acting fast, the crew activate the fire suppressant system, obscuring the line of sight to the prisoners and their captures, but of course, the adversaries would not be able to see the approaching heroes. Over the sirens of the base, an automated countdown of the station's self-destruct system started. Acting fast, the team rush in, only to find that the opponents had abandoned their position and raced upstairs to the upper level. Troy quickly started to stop the self-destruct, disabling it with some seconds to spare. Meanwhile, on the upper level, LD and Mastodon see the three remaining boarders heading for a control room. LD commands Mastodon to fire, with two of the black clad assailants being cut down in Gauss gunfire, one however managed to get into the control room. Rejoining LD on the upper level, Sarge confronted the sole remaining enemy, who had jerry-rigged a dead man trigger detonator to the station's destruction unit. This would destroy the station's reactor coolant system if detonated, the meltdown would be unstoppable. Sarge and the lone boarder talked. Not wanting to die, the boarder said that he wanted safe passage out of here, and for that, he would not only stop the detonation, but would also talk about the attack. Agreeing on safe passage, Sarge listened to the man told him that this was a mercenary operation. Paid for by clandestine sources, the mercenary stated that he believed it was Zodani money and influence behind the attack. The planning had been over months, all too, so he believed, in an effort to bring the Imperials into war. Finding common ground the two old soldiers shared a moment of understanding. As the mercenary departed, the team's radios came to life with Steffi calling from the lower engineering deck. There had been trouble. Rushing down, the heroes find Jerry the commander lying in a pool of blood, a thin blade in his back. Steffi is standing back covered in blood, and not her own it would seem. Crying she shouted that she had to do it. Not waiting to hear excuses, Troy shouted they should flush the bitch out the airlock, his reaction due to the deep bond he and Jerry had made over a short space of time. No, Steffi said. Look at his computer. In the dead man's hands was a personal terminal taped into the station's computer system. It would seem that Jerry was flushing security and confidential data from the scout service system. Steffi had acted to stop it, and when confronting Jerry, he pulled a gun. What will happen now? Is Steffi lying? Was Jerry a spy? Find out next time.